Today I am talking about introducing tillage in no-till farming system. Last week, at a couple of places, GRDC updates at Kunabarabran and the control traffic uh, conference in Toowoomba, they labeled us bad guys, rightly. We are trying to introduce tillage into no-till farming system. I'll use a fair, very famous old saying that trees that are flexible, they are likely to stand in case of a storm. However, rigid trees, they are likely to fall. And rigid no-till farming system is like rigid tree. Like any other system, no-till farming system is not perfect either. It has developed its own problems. Unless we manage those specific issues of the no-till system or introduce some flexibility into the no-till farming system, it's likely that no-till farming system will also fall at some stage. By doing so, by introducing this flexibility into the system, GRDC is very much concerned about the fact that by introducing this flexibility, we are not compromising with the benefits of the no-till farming system. And that's what the project is quantifying the impact of the stillage in no-till farming system. Last year, we did a number of trials. And on the basis of those, what we got in brief, I'll just explain, uh, give those uh, take-home messages, and then we will go further. We introduced one-time tillage in this long-term no-till farming system. What we end up? We help control winter weeds. Slightly improved grain yield and profitability. It retained many of the soil quality benefits. However, at most sites, we got reduced soil moisture. What does that mean? That means we definitely need rain between the tillage and the sowing of the crop, or immediately after the sowing. That's a prerequisite. That means the importance of the timing of the tillage and the seasonal forecast is very important. So that's a take home message. Just to put a background to the project, in good old days, we used to do stubble burning and aggressive tillage. At that time, that was the necessity at that time because there was no herbicides to control weeds. There was uh, no fungicide to control these, uh, many of these diseases. 50 years of research, development, and extension activities we, into the no-till farming system, we got a number of benefits, including soil health, water quality benefits, environmental benefits, and reduced labor, reduced machinery cost, all sorts of benefits we got with that no-till farming system. At the same time, we end up with some problems as well. And some of them, Probably one of the biggest threat to the no-till farming system is buildup of hard-to-kill weeds. With a narrow range of herbicides available with us, many of these weeds, they have developed resistance. Farmers are finding it very difficult to kill these weeds. And many farmers, they are doing five to six sprays, double knock herbicides. And one farmer in the, uh, over the tea time, he mentioned that he has already uh, sprayed his paddock four times, and still he can see plenty of weeds. And he might have end up doing another uh, spray. So, and there are also concern about environmental and health concern about the herbicides. Herbicide do have some off and on side impacts. Looking at the integrated weed management manual, they still consider tillage as one of the management practice for killing these weeds. Other problems with the no-till system is increased incidence of soil and stubble borne diseases like crown rot. There are a number of reports showing that zero-till stubble retain has got high um, incidence of crown rot in the field. Similarly, yellow spot, stock rot, all of these are a threat to the no-till farming system. And tillage is again a manage, one of the management strategies for these. Another problem with the no-till farming system is the nutrient stratification. 
especially immobile nutrients such as phosphorus and zinc. In no-till farming system, we apply these nutrients in the top 0 to 5 centimeter. And we know that evaporation in our region is about four times higher than the precipitation. So that means the topsoils dries out very quickly. And once the topsoil is dried out, whatever is sitting there, whatever the nutrient is there, plant cannot take that one. So that will be sitting, always sitting there, without being taken by the plants. And many of our soils, they have got plenty of nutrients sitting in the top soil, in the top 0 to 10 centimeter. However, subsoils where some moisture is there, there is no nutrient. Newton Management Initiative project led by Mike Bell, that they are clearly showing there is a good responses to the phosphorus and zinc fertilizer when we applied deeper in the subsoil. So that also involved tillage. Another issue is soil compaction, especially with the wet harvest, what we had in few years, uh, in the last few years. We have developed a fair bit of compaction. So what we need, probably zonal tillage or strip tillage to manage these, these, uh, these, uh, um, these tracks, tram tracks. So these are some of the issues what we are facing with the zero till farming system and they are putting bigger threat on the sustainability of this no-till farming system. So what we did last year, oh sorry, before we go that, um, last year, our extension officer, they did market research with the, about 55 growers throughout the northern grain region, and most of the time, they were one-to-one -one, uh, interviews. And what they come up with, briefly, many farmers, they said that we cannot zero till anymore. We have to go back to plowing in order to manage some of these specific issues of the no-till farming system. That's what they come up with. Simply because they are unable to kill weeds, profitability is going down. So the question comes, is this strategic occasional tillage is the way to go forward? But at the same time, many growers who follow strict no-till farming system they believe, strongly believe that single tillage may be enough to reverse their soil condition back to the start of conservation farming system. And they strongly believe that we should not be introducing tillage into the system. And that was the reason why we were considered called as bad guys. So what we did in 2012, we selected five sites throughout the northern grain region. In they all had different history of no-till farming system, starting from seven to 44 years, continuously no-till farming system. One of the common thing they had was this weeds, flea van, rose grass, couple of properties, warwick and viva, they had uh, crown rot as a, another issue. On all of these sites, in month of March, we applied tillage. And a couple of places, we applied second tillage in the third week of April as well. At all the places, we used time type of implement. At two places, at Muni, we used offset disk. At Viva, we used Kalichan as well. Good thing about last, this year, last year, what last season was, that we got very good rainfall after applying uh, between tillage and the sowing of the crops except for one property at Viloela. And also, good thing was that last year we got very good in-crop rainfall. That was fairly good thing to happen. So just to give you some results, what we got last year. These are some of the pictures. That's a wheat crop where we had no tillage for the last about 15, 16 years. And we could still see plenty of in-crop weeds. Whereas in case of uh, where we had this uh, tillage applied, fields were fairly cleaned. That's a, something similar happened in chickpea crop and something similar happened with the barley crop. To put the number against these, we did weed population, weed counts. The introduction of tillage significantly reduced weed intensity or density. And the second tillage 
further reduced the weed population at all the sites. We measured soil bulk density, although the results between tillage and non-tilled paddocks, they were, not, they were not significant. However, tillage tended to reduce the bulk density at all the sites. In some cases, it was fairly uh, big reduction, but at most of the places, it was just minor differences. We measured the soil moisture content at all the sites. Although the results were non-significant, but again, tillage tended to decrease the soil moisture content. At this site, in spite of the fact that we got 118 mm of rain, still it could not refill the profile to the same level. It could be because the soil is very heavy clay soil and would probably require a lot more rain water to bring back to the same moisture level. At this site, we got only 25 mil rain, so probably there was no chance that this could be filled. But at this site, about 81, 51 mil of rain or 81 rain was more than enough to refill this profile. We did organic carbon measurements. Only at Muni and Viva, there was a significant decrease in the organic carbon with the introduction of tillage. However, at most sites, there was tillage has a tendency to reduce the organic carbon, except for this Warwick site, where there was no significant difference. There was absolutely no difference. Could be because that the system has been in place for the last 44 years, and probably the carbon would have probably got a bit more stabilized. And one uh, chisel tillage, the intensity of the tillage was not that much to bring some significant changes in the organic carbon. Looking at the phosphorus, same story happened, except for Muni and Viva, the differences were non-significant, but again, tillage has a tendency to reduce uh, stratification of phosphorus in the topsoil, and there was a actually redistribution of phosphorus to the subsoil, and that's what uh, is a bit desirable, that's what we were expecting. We did some microbial activities, some funny results. At one property, Tillage significantly increased the microbial activity. At other property, it significantly reduced the microbial activity. So it will be very important to find out whether this increase or decrease was uh, related to the fungal activity or microbial activity. We have got a PhD student who will be, uh, she will be doing all this uh, in the coming months, and the, probably we will have some better idea uh, what is the contributing factor into the whole story. Looking at the grain yield, although the tillage significantly increased the grain yield only at one site, that's a condomine, but all other sites, at all other sites, tillage has the tendency to increase the grain yield. In looking at the average, on an average, tillage increased the yield by about 100 kilogram per hectare. And that resulted into the profitability. So tillage improved the profitability. At condemine site, it was fairly high, probably because it was a chickpea crop and which has got a fairly high grain prices. There was uh, probably no impact of Kelly chain at Viva site. So that's why we got negative, um, negative profitability. So using first year of results, and some of the literature research, sir, what we came up with some, some sort of a framework for the implication of the tillage into the no-till farming system. We believe and we have seen that when we introduce tillage into the system, it will reduce plant available water. Due to the high evaporation, it will desiccate the soil and we will end up with reduction in the plant available water. But we believe that this could be short-lived once we get some good rain, we expect that it will refill the profile and it will, the system will be come back into the same original position. So it all depends when we get the rain. We are expecting that it will have some positive impact on the weeds. However, weeds could be tricky. There could be some uh, seed, uh, weed seeds sitting dormant in the soils 
and by doing tillage they might get favorable environment and we might end up with some different uh, species of the weeds. So it could be tricky. We are expecting that uh, there will be some positive impact on the soil bone diseases. We expect that uh, there will be some setback to the soil organic carbon initially. When we do tillage, there will be some oxidation of the organic carbon and we are bound to get some initial fluxes of the carbon dioxide and we might lose some carbon dioxide, but literature suggests that the long term impact may not be there. It may last only for a season or maybe two seasons. Phosphorus, there could be some positive impact on the phosphorus redistribution and that's positive uh, effect we are expecting. There would be some negative impact on the beneficial biota and especially it could be more true for the large microbes like earthworms and all those. One of the bigger threat we are considering is that there could be some water and nutrient runoffs. If we get a very heavy rains after the tillage, we might end up with some of these water and nutrient runoff. That would be a fairly negative impact. We are expecting some positive impact on the productivity, but some of the literature coming from the US and Europe that suggests that it could be negative after one or two seasons. Similarly, profitability, it could go negative as well. Well, we come to the end that uptake of this system, that is strategic tillage system, into the no-till farming system would depend on three things. That is co system cost and profitability, soil health and environmental benefits. These three things are going to dictate the uptake of uh, this uh, strategic tillage. Many of Australian growers, they are very much concerned about the profitability at the moment, simply because of very high volatility in the grain prices, very high dollar rate, Australian dollar rate, and very high in the cost of uh, managing these herbicides. So they are finding profitability as one of the most biggest driving factor for this strategic tillage. But at the same time, many growers, they are fully aware of the soil health and environmental benefits. They don't want, they wouldn't like to compromise on those as well. So what we are looking at is a, some sort of a balance, some sort of a trade-off between profitability and this negative impact. And this could be different for different properties. It would be site specific. It depends on number of factors, what issue farmer has got, what sort of, and how long he had this no-till farming system going on, and a number of other issues. So it could be site specific. This study has raised two major questions. At many places, we have, a couple of places we have seen that number of soil properties, there was a, some negative impact on the uh, soil properties. The question comes, this one-time tillage, how long it will take for the soil to come back to the original condition, from the pre-till conditions? How long it is going to take? That's the one of the questions. Another question comes, that one-time tillage, how long that will be effective in managing the issues of the no-till farming system? Or do we have to till every year? Are we going to make our soils addicted to the tillage again? That's one of the biggest concern with us. Thanks. What are the speed that you, the tillage was carried out? What was the speed of the? Uh, all the tillage operations were done by a farmer, and uh, at most of the places we were driving at about say 20, uh, 20 kilometers per hour. 20, 20 kilometers speed, that's what you are asking? Or the depth of the tillage? Uh, yes, speed, the, uh, about 50, yeah, tractor speed was around 15 to 20 kilometers. <laughs> so it was uh, probably in that range. And the depth of the tillage was around, uh, most of the places were around 15 to 20 centimetres. Wondering about um, if you're going to look at summer cropping systems as well, or only winter? Definitely, we are going to look into the summer cropping as well. Last year also, we started one trial at Monto, where we were planning to do summer cropping. But unfortunately, um, uh, we have we, that particular paddock, we, we didn't get the rain and sometime after September, 
till December, we didn't get any rain, so there was no planting moisture. We couldn't do even the soil sampling because the soil was too hard. So that trial will be still be going, but I don't know whether that will be going into summer or winter. But uh, definitely this year we are going to have a couple of trials uh, with the Newton Management Initiative uh, in the Emerald area. That they will be going into summer. Yeah. Uh, what we have, our intention is that uh, these five trials, what we had in 2012, they will be sampled annually for the, to, st uh, to study the uh, residual impact. We will be introducing few more sites. We have already introduced four more uh, new sites. So we will end up with the nine sites next year. Out of those five will be having the residual impact and uh, four uh, fresh impact. And similarly, then we will introduce uh, three more sites in the third year. So that's uh, our plan is so that uh, to get a range of soil types and to understand, to get the residual impact for at least uh, two to three years. <coughs>